So this is July 2021. We're in the midst of this pandemic and this takeover of this country by domestic enemies, by foreign enemies. And I'm interviewing a very well-connected uh, man in the military, active duty, uh, who has been in special forces, strike forces, and he's going to tell us what it's like now and how it's been changed since the Biden administration and even before, um, how they have been um, weakening the U.S. military and all sorts of information that we don't know about. Um, I want to know, for example, how you are personally being affected by this mandatory vaccine agenda is, is one thing. Uh, well, personally, um, I'm not being affected personally myself. Um, I'm on my way out. Uh, but beside that, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm in a special unit. I'm not regular. I'm not infantry. Uh, all infantry is going to have to get the, the vaccines, you know, all airborne. Um, anyone who's, who's, uh, who's under uh, Defense Department uh, uh, regulations, which is anyone who's in the military. So they're going to have to uh, get the, these uh, vaccines, and uh, most don't want them. So that's what I'm curious. Most of them don't want them. Right. Well, I mean, you just look at history. You know, is that right there? I, do I need I say more? I mean, just look at history. Uh, to to, to, to well, Gigi, you know, to Stiggy, whatever. Uh, the, right. that, well, you and that was, I know the vaccines are poison, but I don't right. know how many other men in the military know that. Uh, most of them know. Uh, the ones who are, are naive really are the, the, the newest, uh, just, coming out of the, uh, just coming out of boot camp or the academy. Uh, if, you, if you're a West Pointer. Um, you're taught the exact opposite. It's, you know, uh, listen to the government because the government is your mommy, and that's it. You just do what you're told. Trust that's the it. government. Trust right, right. The, the, the scariest words, I think Ronald Reagan said yeah, this. I was about to say that. That was yeah. exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, he said, he said uh, uh, we're, we're, we're the, from the government. We're here to help. At this point, we're talking about vaccines being forced on men in the military. Mm -hmm. um, Anything else you'd like to add about that? Well, uh, just that uh, it, it really it's illegal. Uh, but then again, they've been doing a lot of illegal things, and I think everyone's waiting for someone else to do something. That's that's how how bad things happen. Are, are you? This is changing the subject a little bit. It's still related in that it's related to bio warfare. Are you aware of bioweapons technology uh, stuff they're doing at Fort Detrick? Uh, Fort D Detrick, not specifically Fort Detrick, no. But uh, I know, uh, I know, there's a lot of stuff going on right now. I mean, under your feet, almost literally under your feet, and you don't know about it. Since you're mentioning under my feet or our feet. Uh, are you referring to any of the underground military bases? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of them. There's Where are they? Well, there's one on the East Coast. It's as big as Manhattan. has its own nuclear power plant. has a Walmart, McDonald's. I mean, you name it. Have you been there? Yeah, I've been there twice. You're kidding. No, I have a Crypto 13 security clearance. What does that mean? It's a, it's a handler. Um, uh, I, I, I was an intelligence officer for 15 years. And uh, when I was working out of San Diego Bay... Uh, 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 naval intelligence uh, and army intelligence. Um, I mean, I, I, I handle things that uh, only a few people handle. And I've seen things that uh, sign enough uh, non-disclosure agreements that if I said anything about certain things, I, I'd go to prison for the rest of my life. But certain things I can talk about, like things that were leaked, you know, like these, the underground, the dumps, deep underground military bases. They, they have a... Hold on. D-U-M-B, correct? Right. Say what it stands for again? Dumb. Deep underground military base. Okay. How many are there? Uh, what I know, from what I know, at least five that I know of. Spread out around the United States? Right. Uh -huh. Right. And the code is... 
out west, uh, uh, one on the east coast, a real big one, real big one on the east coast. You can go from the east coast to the west coast and not, not ever come above ground. Are you serious? Yeah. Are you serious? Yes. Totally serious. Matter of fact, there's a place you can see right in the Dakotas. You can go right in the side of a mountain. You need security clearance. Uh, they have uh, trucks going there, uh, delivering everything from food to plane parts to munitions. You know, you name it. I mean, we went under there. That's what, what I. I mean, I, I was um, munitions is what I do. You know. But you you can you can go. From the east coast to the west coast, underground. Underground, completely underground. Without having to come Without up. Without having to come up. And there's turnoffs. You need security clearances to get through these turnoffs. They go into other bases. They go into other areas and, you know, uh, secret places, places you can't go. And what do they do there? Uh, they do a lot of things. I can tell you one thing. They have two sets of elevators. And my security clearance got me, got me down to the main, the main hub, which is as big as Manhattan. I mean, it's as big as Manhattan. It's unbelievable. They have, uh, they have their own. They have acres of, of farm farmland wait, wait, with wait, wait, lights wait and farmland underground. Underground. They run the lights off farmland nuclear. Underground. Yeah, they have they have nuclear power plant underground, and they use that for everything. All the power under there. They they grow food. Yeah, they grow food. They have livestock. I mean, everything. Yeah, they have everything. They have bench shafts. They have everything. Uh, but the two sets of ele elevators I was telling you about, uh, my clearance, I, I can only go down to the main hub. Then there was another set of elevators that brought you down further. And uh, a bunch of friends of mine would tell me stories about that. Can you tell us anything about those stories? Yeah, I can tell you what they told me. What they told me is uh, there's actual aliens, uh, greys. Yeah, wait, wait. Aliens. aliens. What was the word, greys? Greys. And, and, and also there's what another kind. Uh, there's a, there's like different, there's different species that they, they talk about. Um, there's greys, there's, uh, the so reptilians, wait, 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 all different kinds. A gray is a type of alien. Right. It's not really a, it's, it's not really an alien. It's, it's a drone. It's not really a, it's like a, um, an organic drone. It's, that's, that's exactly what it is. What does that mean, an organic drone? It's not, it's not a living thing. It's, um, it's in living tissue, but it's a drone. They're not real. I mean, look, <clears throat> there's different types, right, that I've, that I've heard of and that I was told about. Um, I've seen some things. Uh, they're not uh, th these, these grays that, that people talk about all the time. They're not actual aliens. They're drones. Okay. okay they're being used. Okay. okay? Uh, I don't know who makes them. Uh, I don't believe they come from other planets. I don't believe any of these things come from other planets. I believe they've been here all along, and they're deep underground. And uh, I've heard enough stories, and, and I've seen enough things to believe that. So I, I totally believe that. Anything else that your friends told you about the dumbs? Yeah. Um, well, uh, all right. There was this guy named Schneider, Bill Schneider. I think his name was. He's a gemologist. And uh, he was uh, uh, Dulce, in New Mexico. They they had this base. They had a big underground base, and they were adding on to it. They broke through this one part uh, underground, and I, I guess they they came upon these uh, these uh, aliens. They said they were they were gigantic aliens, and they came across aliens underground. Underground, yeah, they were already underground. They were already. Yeah, and they, they killed. There was a bunch of soldiers killed there. There was a bunch of soldiers that were killed there. The soldiers were killed by the aliens? Yeah. Yeah. There was like a, a, an underground war, like a mini underground war. Right there in Dulce, New Mexico. There was a bunch of soldiers that were killed. I know that for a fact that there were soldiers spell killed. What's the name of that place in New Mexico? Dulce. D U L C E, I think it is Dulce. Okay. I think it's Dulce. And you know people, you, you were just saying that you know people that. I know for a fact that people were killed there. All right? Uh, black berets, a couple red berets, but there's a bunch of black berets, uh, at least 15 of them were killed there. How long ago was that? Oh, that was, I think that was in the 80s when that happened. So, yeah. aliens, how could it, I mean, before the military built these dumps, 
deep underground military bases, the Earth is solid. How, no? The Earth is not solid. No. Could you explain? Well, I mean, there's, there's, there's systems, cave systems that if you go down far enough, they go, I mean, they go throughout the, the whole planet. I mean, un, I'm talking about under the ocean. You know, that's, that's, uh, that's one thing. I mean, I saw, I saw maps. Um, yeah, I guess I could talk about this. Uh, look, there, there was a lot of, there was a lot of things found. Um, old maps and, uh, the military being the military, you know, um, there was a lot of things found. They, they, they did a lot of digging. They have these machines now that are actually, they fuse, they fuse the rock. They they go through and they they turn the rock. It's like glass. It looks like glass, like a glass uh, wall. When it goes through it, it 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 burns. It melts the rock, and it turn it turns it into glass. The the surrounding when they go through and they dig tunnels like that. That's how they tunnel now. The boring machines, these giant boring machines. Um, in the 1940s, they used to they started doing all these tunneling. I mean, they did it way before then. They, they found they, they had technology in the 40s to do this. They they had it way before then. Look, we we found all right. Just an example, and I have a paper. Uh, we found uh, this wall in Iraq. All right, all these mon monoliths and the hieroglyphics and all these other things. Right, they were trying to move the wall. It broke. Behind that wall, now this wall was over 2,000 years old. Behind that wall was an even older wall. It was at least four or five, ton five times the age. It had pictures of helicopter, a helicopter, a jet plane. I'm not kidding. I mean, Alex Jones had that on his, uh, on his site. Uh, you know, so, and I know who leaked it to him, too. I can't say, but I know who leaked it to him. Really? Yes. And, it, and this is a fact. We actually found this. This is something I could, I could tell you about. And it was leaked. Now, I have the paper that, that was on Alex Jones' site in my briefcase right now. Really? Yeah. What paper is that? Uh, it's off his site. It's off by uh, Infowars. And it talks about what you're talking about now? Yeah, it was, it was leaked to them, and they put it out. I see. And they took Alex Jones down uh, over some made-up things, you know, and, and uh, that's how they do. That's how they do it. They destroy you. or they kill you. One. Have you, did you hear about the suiciding of the Capitol Police recently? The suiciding of the Capitol Police? You know what suiciding means? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not trying to be... No, no, no. Um, yeah, I, I didn't know for sure about this until yesterday. Uh, I saw this I saw this on uh, Stu Peters and, uh, and someone named Salty Cracker are talking about these capital police being suicided mm -hmm. uh, because they knew too much. They knew that the January 6th event was not an insurrection. It was more like a false flag. You're right, right. Is that your understanding? Yeah, that's exactly my understanding. It's not only them. Way before that, did you hear about the suiciding of the bankers, all those bankers jumping off roofs? I, yeah, I've been, I've been okay. watching that. Well, that was the same thing. And uh, Kyle, Chris Kyle, same wait, thing. Wait, wait, wait. Chris who? Chris Kyle, the guy who was supposedly killed, uh, who, 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 you know, the sniper. And that was oh, all a lie. Oh, that, the famous guy that they made a movie out of? Right. Or? What about him? It was all a lie. Could you, what are you talking about? It was all a lie. Look, the guy, the guy, the guy was a, uh, he was a sleeper, okay? And he was, he was, uh, he was used and then he was sent into the next life, you know? Because he knew too much. The same thing with... Uh, the SEAL team that went in to kill Osama oh, bin oh, Laden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me about that. They were murdered because they... Yeah, 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 yeah. They found out it was all bullshit. The whole thing, excuse my language. It was all garbage. It was all garbage, all of it. Uh, Osama bin Laden died in 2003, okay? Right. Yeah, he yeah. died in a naval hospital. He was hooked up to a to a, a, a uh, one of those machines. Uh, he had renal failure. Right. And I remember when that happened. I, they were talking all about it. And, oh, shh, nobody's saying, you know, nobody's saying that. And then they buried him at sea. They don't, you don't do that with a Muslim. Not only you, you not bury you him do at that. sea, and they made up the lie that this is a, a, a Muslim tradition. Yeah. Um, but you bury him at sea, the advantage to them 
is that you can't find the body That's because there is no body. Just because it wasn't his body. It, there was a body, but it wasn't his. I see. It was all a lie. The whole thing was a lie. Right. 9-11, the whole thing was a lie. I mean, come on. We knew about that when it happened. and, and Wait, uh, You knew about that when? How soon after it happened? Well, I joined the Army in 87, okay? And uh, when that when, when 9-11 happened, uh, I remember exactly where I was. I, I was overseas. I, I can't tell you where I was, but I was overseas. And uh, we knew exactly what happened because... Like I said, what I do, we know what munitions look like when they go up, when they take a building down. When you demo, demo a building, it's a lot different. Let me stop you. When you say demo, you mean controlled demolition. Exactly. Right? You know, I heard that in the military, that the administration of the military was making life hell mm -hmm. for the men that would not take the shot. Oh, yeah. Could you tell us about that? Well, yeah, they um, they do that regularly. If, if, if you don't do what they want you to do, uh, they give you the worst assignments and they, you get treated pretty bad, you know, uh, depending on where you are, too. Uh, I've seen people get sent out into uh, an area that was really dangerous. Uh, where, that, where? Well, uh, Iraq. Okay. Uh, if they weren't, if they didn't do what they were told, uh, like, like me, for instance, uh, I was given a direct order to, to kill this man's son because he wouldn't cooperate with this, this crazy You're colonel. You're kidding. No. And I said no. Was this in Iraq? Yeah. Wow, God bless you for that. Well, he, they court-martialed me, or they tried to, they attempted to, and my uncle saved me at the very end, but, uh, they demoted me. I was a major for, uh, uh less than 24 hours. And I disobeyed direct order, and they demoted me. That's why I went back to captain. I wanted to be captain anyway. Again, I, I didn't want to be a major. That's horrific, you know. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but uh, you see that every day. I you mean, see that, You see that type of thing every day? Well, I mean, well, I mean I, I've seen it. I've seen it enough times where if, if, you, if, if, if a commanding officer doesn't like you, watch out. I'll just put it that way. Have they lost their soul? The military, or <laughs> well, that commanding that anyone that would tell you to murder or kill an unarmed civilian or a child, their son, son. I mean, have they lost their soul? Um, you don't have to comment on that. That's a, I'm kind of implicating, but feel free to say whatever you want. Well, I mean, we I we saw we saw the video. That I think Snowden released of the the men in the helicopter shooting those civilians. Yeah, yeah. But um, you've seen that firsthand. Uh, well, I tell you, my my squad, um, we never see. They never had to worry about being put in a spot like that. I never did. Uh, my commanding officer was was a great man. He was killed. Um, where, where was he killed? In Iraq. And um, that's why I got I got hurt pretty bad. And you you had mentioned that you had been seriously injured by an IED. Is that correct? Yeah. So you've seen firsthand the horrors of war. Well, yeah, I, I've been um, in com conflict since uh, I joined in '87. I've been in conflict since '89. Somalia, Serbia. You were in Somalia. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they had kids. They actually had kids lobbing grenades. I was shooting. Uh, uh, grenade uh, rocket uh, launch, launching grenades at us, uh, AKs, you know, trying to kill us kids. Kids? Like, yeah, eight, nine, ten. Eight, nine, ten years old? Yeah, young kids. You yeah. saw that? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and and you know, if, you, if you're a civilian, if you pick up a weapon, you're not a civilian anymore. These, these kids, how, how they were, how they were indoctrinated is usually you'd have, uh, they'd go into a village and they'd kill most of the men. And they'd kick in the door, they'd kill the father, and then they would hold the mother with a machete, and they would, uh, they would if there was two boys there, they would tell the one boy, kill your mother or I'm going to kill your mother and your brother and then you. So the mother would eventually say, do it, do it, you know, to save her, both, both her sons. So the boy would kill his mother. You're kidding. No. And that's how, and, you know, of course, when you, if you do something like that, 
You know, it's going to do something to you. And this happened? Yeah, it happened all the time. That's how they recruited most of the kids that they had there. In Somalia? They would kidnap them, yeah. In Somalia? Yeah, they would slaughter their family, and they would have them murder their mother. That's what they would do. And in Serbia, I mean, they were cutting open pregnant women. They, crazy. Wait, wait, who was doing that? The, the, the Serbs were doing it to the uh, Bosnians. Wow. Just cutting open their, their were stomachs. You in, were you in Serbia? Yeah. So you've seen a lot of, yeah, a lot of action, a lot of danger. Well, I I thought of, that's what I wanted. You know, I mean, that's what I joined up for. That's what I was trained for. My brother was a Navy SEAL. You know, uh, my little brother. So I wanted to, I don't know. I wanted to do the right thing. And and then when you get in there, and you find out that none of that matters. The politics, none of it matters. The only thing that matters is. I'll keep you alive, you keep me alive. That's it. Not, none of that matters, none of it. No did, politics or anything. Did you ever hear what Henry Kissinger, the war criminal, said about men in the Cannon fodder. Is that what he said? I, I, he also said something else. Animals. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, and then there was... Well, what they call us, too. What they call us, the useless eaters, or the unwashed. Right. You know, so... Um, yeah. So you've seen a lot of horrors of war. Yeah. And, you know, what I've seen, what, this is one of the things that changed my understanding, because I used to be a liberal. I used to look at the New York Times every day, and I started to see that they were always promoting war right. from a, a safe desk in the United States mm -hmm. while men in the U.S. military and in foreign countries would get slaughtered. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what changed my view. Because I was always anti-war. Mm -hmm. um, anything else you want to talk about? Um, more about the dumbs? I mean, that that's mind-boggling to me. You, you mentioned... Well, they have rails. They have a railless train. Goes wait, goes Mach one. Wait, wait. What'd you just say? They have a railless train. It's it's actually a rail, but it it hovers about two inches above. It's a magnet. It's magnetic. Okay. And it hovers about two inches above the the track. That goes across country. Across the country. Yeah, like Mach one. Uh, uh, Mach one. And what is Mach one? Oh, uh, it's pretty fast. <laughs> is that is that mm. the speed of sound? Yeah, something like that. And it. This train is a military train. No, no, uh, it's for the elite. It's not for the military for the per elite. se. Yeah, there's 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 elite military, but it's not for the military per se. It's it's just for uh, like generals. It's for a few, not all. It depends what side of the fence you're on. <laughs> that sounds a little scary. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. When you go down in a place like that, it's scary. Going underground. Did you say it goes from? From what, where to where, what, one side of the country? Yeah, it takes like 18 minutes, I think they said. Well, like, wait, did you say 18 minutes to get across the country? Yeah, from yeah, the... Yeah, yeah, elaborate on that. It's pre pre uh, well, I, I'm not... How, how do you know about this? I've seen the, the train. You've seen it? Yeah. You haven't seen it moving, though? Uh, no, but I've seen it, and I, I saw that it, it's a magnet. It's magnetic. Uh, I don't know if the, the rail is magnetic or if the train is, but it hovers like this above the track. About two inches. So, that brings up a, another topic, and that is technology. Does the U.S. military have in its uh, possession technology that the American people does not do not know about? Yeah, absolutely. Could you talk about that? <clears throat> Smartphones. I knew about them 15 years before they come out. Secret militarized armament residential technology. That's what it is. It was made to be used against the population, and it's kind of backfired. Same thing with the Internet, you know, with computers and all that. All that, they had that for years and years, and then finally they gave it to the public because they wanted to use it against you. How and it's they, kind of backfired. Did they, how did they want to use it against us? By surveilling us? Yeah, and uh, knowing everything that we do. It's the same thing with the smart TVs and all that. Um, they can actually they have uh, little cameras, they have a little audio. I mean, they know what you're doing whenever they want, really. Whenever they want to target you. Right. Whenever they want to target a dissident. Right. And a dissident is anyone who disagrees with them. 
<laughs> That's what a dissident is. Yeah. And we're also American. We're also a, a homegrown terrorists if we disagree with them. If we're on the other side of the fence, you know, we're terrorists. Is this what you signed up for when you signed, joined the military? <laughs> no. What did you sign up for? I wanted to serve my country. I love my country. Uh, I love God. I, 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 I saw a lot of atrocities that were going on. I, I wanted to see if maybe I could do something about it. And we did. We did a lot of good. But we were put into a lot of bad positions. And most of my friends are dead. And, um, and I find that was all a lie. It's all a lie. The whole thing. The whole thing is a lie. Uh, right or left, it doesn't matter. None of them are your friends. Believe that. None of who are your friends? The right or the left. You know, the right is, yeah, they, what, what, I, I agree with them on, on, on a lot of stuff. Right. Um, you know, all your rights, uh, they're given to you by God. I believe that. Uh, your right to be, keep and bear arms to defend yourself should not be infringed. None of these gun laws are legal, not a one. They're all totally illegal. So I don't do illegal things. So I don't follow illegal laws. If they're illegal, they're not a law. And that's an illegal law, so I don't follow it. Uh, my, my advice to anybody uh, who wants to protect their family and themselves is uh, get yourself a good weapon, get yourself plenty of ammunition, and don't tell anybody about it. Don't register it, because registration le leads to confiscation every time. And you don't ever want to know what you have. So. That's very sound advice. Well, um, uh, I saw something today about... Uh, well, I saw, I mean, the person, this is a video that's gone semi-viral. I saw a day or two ago, uh, a guy that looks like a black cowboy from the South, and he, uh, he, t he was taking a video of himself, and he, he, he had a outfit, a, a uniform, and he was showing it. And he said, you know, I, I don't usually tell people I'm in the military or I was in the military, uh, but I was in the Marines. And I'm not trying to brag about it, he said. Um, he said, the reason he said that and the reason he showed this outfit was he said, if somebody comes to inject me, I'm going to kill them. <laughs> And I'm not going to feel bad about it. That's right. That's self-defense. <laughs> Self-preservation. Yeah. And I thought, yeah. and, and I shared that video with people that I know. Mm -hmm. And I thought, um, unfortunately, this is what it's coming to, it seems. And they will kill you. They will kill you if you fight them. You know, that, that's the thing. It's just one man. I, I, I get what he's saying. I'm 100% with him. But the thing is, they're not going to come at you one at a time with a needle. That's not going to have. The, that's not how it's going to happen. Uh, you know? Well, since you mentioned that, I assume that you heard about Jen Psaki and uh, saying that we're going to send strike teams to people's doors. Right. Is this what you're referring to? Yeah. <laughs> so she said. Now, not that I ever trust anybody from government, much less the illegal Biden regime, which mm. stole the election. Mm -hmm. But since they did steal it, she said um, we're coming with strike teams to educate people about the value of the, uh, of the injection. And even um, Cuomo uh, recently, I mean, a day or two ago, said, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna. I, I don't remember the exact terminology of the verbiage, but he said we're gonna come and we're gonna bring you and we're gonna give you a shot. What do you think of all of that? Well, uh, look what they did in, uh, look what they did in Louisiana. Are you referring to the gun confiscation? The gun confiscation, yeah. Now that that's it was totally illegal, completely illegal. That, well, wait, completely. Let, let me stop for a second, just so people know when that took place. That was after Hurricane Katrina, right? When was how many years ago was that? Oh, geez. Like mm. ten years ago. Some, or something? yeah, something like that. Maybe yeah. more than that. I'm sorry. So go ahead. Uh, well, that was illegal. They, they, you're not allowed to do that, <laughs> but they did it. 
the mil- U.S. military did that. Right. It was actually the National Guard, uh, you know, weekend warriors and uh, the kids, these kids. The new kids. Right. That don't know the Constitution. They'll follow an order if you give it to them. It doesn't matter what it is. They don't think about it. They just do. Now, when, when, you know? when you're telling me that, you're reminding me of another time in history where the similar words were used. I was just following orders. What am I referring to now? Nazi Germany. Right. And uh, that doesn't cut it. But really, the people who uh, implement the laws, the, the people who are, the people who are running everything right now are really bad people. So you can't really quote the law because they're not going by the law. I saw the train. With, your own, with your own eyes? With my own eyes. And... Uh, I I know I know people who were involved in the in uh, everything to do with the train. Now you said you also said the train goes from one end of the uh, from the east coast to the west coast. Is that correct? Right. It takes about eighteen minutes, something. Eighteen like that. minutes. Right. At Mach one speed. Yeah, something like that. I, I'd have to get down there. I'd have to look and look right, that up right. again. But something like that. And you actually saw that train. Yeah, I saw it. And how? I touched. I put my hand on it. <laughs> Because you were amazed by it? Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. And you said that um, you had a certain clearance that allowed you to see that? Yeah, a Crypto 13 security clearance, a handler's. Uh, uh, I, they, give you, they give you aptitude tests, okay? Um, and according to the, the aptitude tests they give you, they give you more aptitude tests. And um, uh, that's how you get certain clearances, you know. They find out where you fit. Is there any other technology that you know about, whether you saw it or not? And besides the phone, you mean? Or anywhere, um, with any technology, like um, uh, energy-related, like Tesla-related, Oh, oh sure, sure. Uh, when we were in uh, Iraq, uh, they have a pulse weapon. It's uh, shaped like a dish. You point it at a building, and uh, there was a building that was like uh, 60-some-odd people in it. And uh, you point out, you turn it on, and they come crawling out, and they're defecating and puking all over themselves and crying and writhing on the ground. All of them, everyone that was in the building. Is this a directed energy weapon? It's a directed energy weapon. Um, You know, you probably heard about the people in the U.S. Embassy in Cuba Mm -hmm. being harmed by certain right a uh, weapon that sounds yeah. similar to that is that could right you talk about uh that? well i can tell you what what i was told uh by someone who knows uh that that actually was a, a uh, weapon it was being tested actually that's what they do they, they do a lot of testing on, on who on, on civilians us yeah the guinea pigs yeah uh in manhattan they did a test um when was it uh, 2014 to 2015, they they released a gas in the, in the subway. I heard about that. Right, that was uh, that was uh, concocted by the CIA, and it was actually implemented by uh, the U.S. military. Uh, uh, special forces uh, did that. So, who's in control of the U.S. military now, in your opinion? Uh, someone I've never met. Someone I'll never meet. Uh, I can tell you that uh, the people who are making all the rules, they're not anyone you're ever going to see on TV. Uh, the people you see on TV, they're just up there for show. It's like a puppet show. Um, I can tell you this, this much, and, and this is a fact. This country, this, this whole planet is not being run by who you think it is. Okay? Uh, everyone's going to find out. Real soon, I think. That's good. Maybe, <laughs> but not 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 really. Uh, now, do you know who that is? Not personally. I never met him, them but, but personally. But you know, are you referring to one specific person? No. A group of people. Right. A species. What? A species. A species. Yeah. Are you saying they're non-human? Uh, well, you know who you can talk to um, about that? That anthropologist I was telling you about? The guy I know? Uh, he can tell you about the elongated skulls and all that that they found. Now, are they called mephilum? 
Nephilim. Nephilim? Yeah, they're, they're uh, actually offspring of uh, angels and humans, human, uh, wi- human women and angels. So they had, they mated with... Uh, uh, That's all real. That's all real. People don't realize I, I they don't found know. giants. They found giant skeletons. They, 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 they found giant skeletons. Now you, you mentioned that you have a friend who is a, did you call him a paleontologist? What did you call yeah. him? Yeah. And he told you all about this? Well, yeah, I, I actually, um, I brought him, I brought him uh, something I found in Iraq. And uh, we started talking about this, and he showed me one of the skulls. And um, they're different because they have uh, some uh, natives used to uh, do binding on the skull to, to elongate the skulls. But, but they, have a, they have a certain, like a fracture, like a, uh, that's in their skull. And, and these don't. These are definitely not human. They also did a, a DNA testing. And it wasn't human. Now, how did they do the? It was from a dead nephilim. Is that how they? Yeah. They got the DNA. Yeah, it was you're from. You're not going to get it from a live one, right? right? No, it was. I guess it was from the skull. I guess certain certain parts of uh, certain bones hold uh, DNA. Now, where did they find these? All over the place. You find them all over the place. Uh, they found them in uh, in uh, in Asia. They found them. Uh, they found a lot of them in Asia, actually. But they found them in North America. They, they, there's giant skeletons in Colorado, I believe. It was in this cave. They found these giant red-headed skeletons. Uh, and then the Museum of Natural History, which is run by the DOD. I bet you didn't know that. I didn't know that. Well, that's a fact. Check it out. Uh, How do you know that? I, I, I know it. <laughs> but they, they, they actually, the DOD runs the, the, uh, the Smithsonian and the Museum of Natural History. Well, why would they do that? Well, they go in and they grab up these giant skeletons and they take them away and they disappear. It's like anything that the military finds artifact-wise that's actually, you know, proves God or anything like that. They'll box it up. They'll, you know, they'll, they'll uh, uh, make a, uh, an index card and box it up and then you'll never see it again. It disappears. All that stuff just disappears. You never you see it again. You mentioned something fascinating. The way you described it, I think you said that they are trying to take away any evidence of God. Did you say that? Yeah, that's a fact. They don't want you to know that God's real. Are you kidding me? Why would they want you to know that God is real? Because that takes their power away from them, doesn't it? Think about it. That takes all their power away from them. You know God is real. And let me tell you something. I joined, uh, I, I had a, you have to volunteer for some programs, secretive programs, and I joined one, it's called Night Eye, and it was, uh, it was about, um, you, you, you come out of your body, astral project out of your body. A lot of people don't believe that, but it's real. No, I know that. It's absolutely real. No, I, I know Okay. That. Um, I had a bad experience, uh, that when I had this experience, I... I pulled off these electrodes off of me, and I got wait, up and wait, I quit you, and you I did, left. You didn't explain the situation. You had electrodes attached to you while they were doing experiments. Right. Well, it wasn't. Ex- well, yeah. I guess it was an experiment. It was uh, astral projection. Uh, it came real easy to me. It's all about the breathing and focus, and uh, you know, you relax your body one thing at a time. You keep that that relaxed while you move on to the next, and you relax your whole body, and you focus and come out. And this Simple. is while you're in the military. They were yeah, doing yeah, yeah. Yeah, I volunteered. It got me a little bit higher up, uh, you know, with security clearance. Okay. And uh, it works, and they tested me. And what was you know? the purpose of this? Uh, because you can go, you can travel to places, and you can get information real easy like that and it's real easy did you were you able to do that i was able to do that but but uh i was in the program for about two weeks and uh they had me go around the building that i was in and i would have to go in another room and have to read something on a page of a book that was open okay and i'd have to tell them what it was and i passed all those tests then wait 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 they would open a book. They, they had two rooms. I was in the one room okay. on the bed okay. with electrodes hooked up. I would astral project out of my body in this other room next to me. You weren't physically in that other room? No, other I was place. not physically in that other room. And you actually were able to quote from that book? Yes, I was able to read a paragraph from that book. You're kidding. No, I'm not. It's the truth. Wow. That's the truth. Well, maybe you can, if I'm reborn again, you could go to school for me so I don't have to study. <laughs> well, the thing is... Uh, the, the time that they wanted me to actually leave out of the building, the first time that they asked me to do that, 
I actually got out of the building and then something told me to go back into my body. So I did. And as soon as I did and I, I opened my eyes and I had to put in my bed was this shape. It was a, a black shape and it was like a wide brim hat. It was a shadow, but it was dark. It was black. You couldn't see through it. So it was, it was, it was actually, it was, a, it was substance. It wasn't, it wasn't a shadow. And what was it? I call it the hat man. But I know that it made me feel way beyond terror, way beyond scared. It was like a hopelessness. I never felt that in my life. And it was pure evil. I never felt anything like that before or since. And I want to tell you something. That proved to me absolutely that God is real. Because I know there's an opposite to everything. That's a fact also. And that was pure evil. So if I seen pure evil and I felt pure evil, I know there's pure good. That proved it to me right there. So you know somebody high up in the border patrol who says, who's a friend of yours, it sounds like, mm -hmm. who knows that this is happening, that they're letting these illegal immigrants in, not just letting, that they're, they're purposely bringing them in. And they want to change the whole demographic of the United States. Yes. And is, is he, is this friend of yours, is he upset? Uh, and paralyzed because he can't do anything about it. Yeah, he's beyond upset he, because he can't do anything about it. And he, he wants to do his job, but they won't let him do his job. Has he talked to the, his higher-ups about yes, it? Yes, he has. And uh, they're all threatening. You know, they, they, want, they, they want to fire. They want to fire people who won't go along with the, with the program. Mm -hmm. They want to get rid of them. Is, and you, you mentioned before this is all related to the... I don't know if you said it quite like this, but the Nephilim or Nephilim who are trying to destroy the people on this planet, is that an accurate assessment or not? Well, I don't know what, I don't know what they're doing. I just know that um, nothing happens without, without them knowing. I get, I, this is what, this is from my understanding. Um, uh, you know, Every time when, when, I was, when I was overseas, whenever I was in a conflict, you could look up in the sky and you can see UFOs. They were always there. You saw them? Yeah, they were always there. I see a cigar-shaped one, has, uh, one uh, uh, like a cylinder, one looked like a tile and all. One was like a V-shape, like a diamond shape. Um, we see them all the time. Um, all the time, whenever there's conflict. You would oh, see wait, them. When there's conflict. When there's conflict, you'd always see them. And why? I don't know. Well, let me tell you something that sounds like it might be related. I have read and heard that aliens have interfered with nuclear production. Yeah, they've nuclear. shut. They've shut down war. They they've shut down. There was a place of Rendlesham Forest. Uh, uh, when was that? Oh man. They shut down all the warheads. Not only there, yeah, there's yeah, a couple yeah. other places. They just shut it down. They started them up. They get them ready to go up. They, they pop the top, and it's ready to shoot off, and then they shut it down. So it seems that like... That total control. But that from what, uh, what little I know and I've heard, that is a good thing that they did that. Uh, well, yeah, I guess it depends how you look at it. Uh, it's kind of scary that, that they could do that, that you know, I mean, uh, to, to all of a sudden to not have any control over uh, something that can destroy a nation, you know, uh, that, that's kind of scary, you know. Well, I mean, I've heard that there's good and there's bad aliens. I don't know. I don't know either. But the reason what made me think of that, of their interfering with these nuclear activities, because nuclear activities, in my view... Um, basically, uh, other than the energy they produce, the the consequences are usually catastrophic. Right, because there is no way to shut them down. There's no if there's a meltdown. There's no way to stop it. And as far as um, uh, in Mexico, New Mexico, they have this underground. Uh, they dig under the sand in these caves, and they store all this nuclear waste. And um, there's le there's some of them that's leaking, and you have the floods, the flash floods that go through there all the time, and uh, they're having all kinds of problems with it, you know. And uh, this has been going on for a while. You don't hear about it. Well, that, that's why. It. That's why I thought that. You know, you, you mentioned that you saw all these UFOs mm -hmm. during wartime. 
mm-hmm. in, in war zones. Right. Is it possible they were there to try and stop it, or what do you think? Well, I think if they wanted to stop, they could have. You how, know, how could they have done that? Uh, well, with their capabilities. I mean, uh, I, 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 I was told what they did with the with the war nuclear warheads that they had complete you know, you, control. You, you were told about that. Who told you about that? Uh, a good friend of mine. Who knows? And how do you how did well? These, we, well I'm sorry, but they, we weren't even supposed to have these nuclear warheads in in this facility. All right, they weren't. They, they were American. And it's not in America, so. Wait, wait. Are you talking about Iraq? No, 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 no. Somewhere else. Yeah, in England. Okay. Uh, it was secret. It wasn't supposed to be there. We weren't supposed to have any nuclear. It's, nobody knew. But you know how many of those places there are? A lot. The the point is that uh, I agree with you. Nuclear energy, um, it's clean, but it's very dangerous, and there's no way the cores can. You know, they burn for hundreds of years. I thought maybe thousands. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, probably. You're probably right. Thousands of years. I'm not too familiar with uh, the life cycle of it, but I do know that they're real dangerous, and I know that I agree with you. Um, there's other forms of energy. Especially since I mentioned Tesla. Mm-hmm. Um, are you familiar with Tesla? Oh, sure. Yeah. So, getting back to the question of technology in the military mm-hmm. that's secret. Do you know any other technology like Tesla's or any others that exist that we don't know about? Well, there's energy in the air. There's energy that surrounds the whole planet. And it's but filled with energy. Yeah, I'm talking about energy that can be used for the betterment of humanity. Or, well, or basically, the military is a, is a hammer, and to, the, to a hammer, everything's a nail. So the military is not going to ever do anything to help humanity. They'll help destroy humanity. Can so you they, repeat? those statements one more time the military what the military well the military is a hammer and, and to a hammer everything is a nail so what does a hammer do to a nail you know so mil- military is not gonna uh, the Corps of Engineers you know you saw what happened with the levy right I, I mean give me a break with what the levy in, in you oh, know in Louisiana. yeah I mean well, wait, are you saying that was intentional no what I'm saying is that the the military is incapable of building up they're only good at blowing stuff up they're, they're good at carrying stuff down blowing it and up and this is coming from somebody who has spent his whole life in the military yeah well it's all compartmentalized nobody knows what uh, the other person's doing and that's why there's so many mistakes not just mistakes, but destruction. Destruction. That's all it's about with I, military. I've heard that the compartmentalization that you're referring to is, I'm sure it's it's pervasive, and I'm thinking of the uh, the chem, the geoengineering, the chemtrailing, mm-hmm. uh, that they the pilots are kept in the dark, mm-hmm. and you know anybody starts blowing the whistle, God knows what happens to them. Yeah, well, they've been seeding the clouds since Vietnam. You know, Ho Chi Minh Trail, and the, you know, that was the main uh, route to, to bring all their weapons. And, you weren't uh, there at that time, were you? No, not that old. <laughs> <laughs> My uncle was there. I see. But yeah, they they were seeding the clouds since then. And right now, that crazy, that crazy billionaire Bill Gates, he hired this private company called C One Thirties, and they're spraying this like aluminum. Uh, uh, some kind of uh, nanoparticles. Yeah, and it's supposed to to uh, you know deflect the sunlight to save the planet. The guy's out of his mind. The guy's crazy. You know, like we're gonna have any effect? Listen, this this planet is just gonna eventually just gonna sweep us right off because I mean I don't think that we're gonna have any real effect. I, I think uh, nuclear weapons have been used way before they say they were even in, and came up with the idea of nuclear. Um, I mean, there's proof of it. They found proof all over the place. Look at Sodom. You know, the, the desert's glass. It's glass. What are you talking about? Sodom and Gomorrah. What about it? Well, the city, it was turned to glass. It was, uh, said God sent down his fire and, and burned the desert and turned it to glass, right? And they found Sodom, and it was glass. The desert, is, so it's glass. I mean, that proves that Sodom is real. That proves part of the Bible right there. They proved a lot of it. Yeah, that's a fact. I mean, you can look that up. As long as they didn't take it down yet, 
you know, these people are taking everything down. It proves God or, or, or proves them wrong. Uh, you know? I, I, I mentioned in the beginning that because I, I was brought up Jewish, I, I don't, I knew very little. Well, it was in the Torah. It was but, in the, but, but let me just finish. Mm -hmm. I knew very little about the Bible. Mm -hmm. It was a really, and Jesus, and it was a very alien concept to me. But in the last few years, a majority of my friends are Christians, mm -hmm. where I've been learning about this. And the, the description in the Bible about the times that we're going through are called end times. Right. And the descriptions are remarkably accurate. That's right. It's, it's unfathomable. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff they're hiding from you. Like what? History. They have books that, and they have them in these airtight chambers uh, under the Vatican. They also have a chair they call the you, devil you, chair. How do you know all about the Vatican? I studied about it. I studied all about it. I was an intelligence officer. I had to study about certain things. I, I was involved in certain things. Okay. My description of the, I say the Pope is a pimp. The, the current one. The current one. Right. I'm not saying the other Well, it's, it's the most uh, corrupt uh, church that there is. And, and also, aren't they pedophiles? Uh, yes. Oh, well, yeah, you're asking me that. Yeah, <laughs> they're, absolutely, they're pedophiles. <laughs> yeah, not not every single priest is a pedophile, no, obviously. Course, but of course. But, but in the yeah. upper echelons. Yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's saturated with sickness. And that's it's wrote about it in the Bible that the, the one, the most corrupt church, uh, uh, the one that was the richest is going to be the most corrupt, and that's the Catholic Church. And uh, it's going to go down, and it's going to go down hard. You know, and it's a shame, but uh, it actually isn't a shame because evil goes down and it goes down hard. Well, I hope you're right. So do I. Because right now, evil is pervasive. Yeah. And it has infected the minds of most of the people in this world. That's right. That are so stupid to take an injection, a bioweapon that's called a vaccine that will change their DNA, make them an instrument uh, for these elite if they don't get uh, killed by it. Well, did you hear what Rockefeller wanted to do before he died? Uh, he wanted everyone to have an RFID chip. And if you didn't go along with their game, they would just shut it off. Because with this RFID chip, you'd have to buy, sell, you're pay right. your rent, and, and you're live. referring to the mark of the beast. Right, right. right. That's what he wanted. Right. That's what he wanted, and they still want that. And this might be a way of them implementing that. Oh, absolutely. There's um, the technology that Bill Gates has been working on for years that would allow, you, uh, you know, through some sort of instrument to scan your, maybe your wrist or mm -hmm. your hand or your forehead to see if you've got a chip. That's right. So, you know, people think this technology... This is so far-fetched that, one, that there even is such a technology, and two, that anybody would be so evil as to implement this, people just will laugh at you because they believe the lies of the mainstream media. Well, I have two RFID chips in my hand right now. Because you had to in being in the military. Well, not being in the military, being in special forces, you have to have I see. You have to have them. I see. Is there anything else you want to say? I mean, we've said a lot. <laughs> um, no, I just, I, I hope, uh, I hope that this gets out hopefully to a lot of people and um, I hope it helps somebody.